My name is Beth. I'm back with Kiki, and this is Community Conversations, Part 3. Today we're going to talk a little bit about religion. What I've been thinking is mm -hmm. there's Christianity, mm -hmm. and then there's your American cultural Christianity, which is more profit-based, is more the selling of a god to create profits. It's for business. It's not really about the God himself. Mm -hmm. It's not about Jesus. It's not about the things that they need you to believe it's about. It's about cliches. It's about memes. It's about bumper stickers. It's about pens and coffee mugs. And I don't really personally believe that they actually know the God that they claim to. You know what I mean? I had an issue with religion, so I stepped away from religion. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 17, so that's about 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason why was because I was forced, as a child, I was a Jehovah's Witness with my parents. Mm -hmm. So when I lived with my grandmother, I had to go to church. Mm -hmm. When I lived with my aunt, I had to go to the mosque because she was in the Nation of Islam. Okay. And I found all of them to be the same. Right. Mm -hmm. It made me study ancient cultures more because yes. I'm figuring it came from somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, um, I think, plagiarism from ancient cultures into the mm -hmm. modern religion. That's my belief. For me growing up, it was chosen for me. Mm -hmm. My belief was chosen for me. I wasn't left to find it on my own. Mm -hmm. It was basically the Catholic Church. And my issue with the Catholic Church is that it's, it's not so much God that does it, the, the destroying, but it's more man that does it. People will blame it on God and say, well, let's take, you know, the priests and the things that they indulge in and the pedophilia, for example, what they do with these young boys. It's not God that allows it. It's man that commits and does this. It's not, I don't know, we like to blame and say, well, why would God let this happen? Mm -hmm. It's man that's let it happen. Right. It's man that's done it. But when you're pushed into a belief, you're not left to find it for yourself. So how true can you be to that belief? Do, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you tell me growing up, this is what you believe, this is the way you believe, this is what it means, and you pass that down to me, how true is that belief? I wasn't left to find it for myself. Mm -hmm. I wasn't brought to this place of, let's say, down on my knees, kind of bare-souled, broken. Then I find it. Mercy, grace, whatever you, you want to call it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like this is what you believe. This is the reasons why you believe. It's all there in this package. And then as you get older, you come to find out that not every prayer is answered. Not every prayer works. They don't tell you why. They just tell you, well, you have to be patient. You know, you take these school shootings. We're going to pray about it. Okay, that's fine, but that's also a reason for you to not do anything about it. I think that with religious people, a lot mm -hmm. of times they give it to God and they take the responsibility of yes. actually doing something about it from themselves and they give it to an entity that's like, right. well, it's non existent. Mm -hmm. if, if he exists to people in your mind, if he exists to you, that's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that the ancient ones had a more personal relationship with, the, I guess, this creative source. Whereas they weren't forced to do... It was like a, having a personal relationship with whatever created right. the world mm -hmm. and everything. And then it's like you take religion and it's now it's you're forced, you're yeah. forced to um, do these things. Instead of having a, a relationship, you have to go through the preacher... You to get right. to God, right, and then you have to pay your tithes, yeah, to get to God. There's all these regulations. <clears throat> Instead of you just finding that for yourself, mm -hmm. you're told what path to take. Healing is to me on an emotional level, and what brings that to me, it may be totally different for you. You know, you come to a place of healing and wholeness, and let's say faith. And the path that I take to get there, you may not take that same path. So I can't sit here and say to you, well, because you didn't take this path to God, 
then you're wrong. Well, for me, religion creates separatism. It does. Because if you're yeah. not a Catholic, mm -hmm. you're going to hell. I can't work with her. Their views are different. <laughs> and if you're not a Christian, oh, Muslims, you know Muslims are bad. Mm -hmm. You know, right. so spirituality and religion are not the same thing. No, I agree with you. They're totally different. I think that you can have a, a relationship with your creator outside of the church mm -hmm. because according to the Bible, your first temple is your body. Right. And people do more destruction to their body than they do inside <laughs> the temple. Yeah. But then you have these religious people who contradict their own religions for selfish reasons. You know what well, I mean? Yeah, like exactly. There's all these commandments, but you pick and choose which ones to follow according right. to what suits your lifestyle. And I notice, like, the preachers, especially today, will cut and paste, so to speak, certain scriptures for their own benefit, for their own self-interest. I, I have a hard problem with religion because I see... And poor communities, a lot of churches, but I don't mm -hmm. see the churches doing things that you would think a church would do for no. the communities. Right. Like a lot of issues with um, children not having outlets, it should come from a church. Well, yeah. A lot of people having uh, <coughs> issues financially or if they're hungry, instead of paying tithes to the church to pay for the church, you can pay tithes and take up a collection to help people and that's end exactly their lives. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't go to church, <coughs> so at this point, I haven't been to church in over 25 years. Well, so I, I, I can't speak on what off. goes into church. My you mom know. tried to get me to go to church with her one time, and you hear the gossip in the pews, <laughs> the teachers preaching, and then it's like mm -hmm. it's a turnoff. Yeah. You're there for spiritual guidance, but you're gossiping about what this lady has on, what this one did last week yeah and it's like we're it's too busy judging people mm -hmm. instead of taking journeys within right to heal yourself i think if and you're gonna true. have a connection with your creator and you're looking for outside sources but the answers are only going to come from within yes you know what i mean i do because Those it's it's a personal thing it's not well like when you had said about the the church's and the tithe. Like how you have to pay tithes in order to receive the blessing from God. So yes. it's like um, yeah. if you don't pay your tithes, you won't be blessed. And that's basically the thing is you go in and you give 10% of your income, okay, and you give it to the church and you're supposed to get this much back. But wasn't Jesus the one turning over the tables? Old Testament, yes. New Testament, there's debate as to whether that even like is implied now with the tithing. Because all I see the tithing doing is making them richer and the community is still struggling for food. They're still struggling to put food on the table. So these people walk away from the church, but they walk away from God because they've and been so turned What do you so think about off. religion needed to be uh, upgraded? It's far, like in because a lot of the allegorical stories are from ancient times. Right. And even though... You know, you still have situations where you're, you're, there's poor people, you mm -hmm. know, there's classism and stuff. With all the new technology and the less interaction between human beings, I think religion needs like an upgrade. I know what you mean. Far like maybe more modernized? To be more modernized. Mm -hmm. See, I've always read like the King James. The, well, beyond that, the original tongue. I mean, past getting past the thy and thee and that and, and <laughs> who can understand those terms. <laughs> But even in the new translations, you're still getting someone else's rendition That's of what the, the text means. The, a lot of the new translations are so far off, and they're so far gone. But because it's even still someone's idea of what this text means. Like, right. I read this text, mm -hmm. and this is what this text means to me. But a lot of people now, with the lack of education that Americans have, or exhibit, mm -hmm. exhibit so how would they yeah. understand the language I that mean, the Bible the thing, is they written can't in because <clears throat> our education system. And then who who is going to be appointed to upgrade upgrade it? Because you have the issue that these are God's words interpreted by man, and then there's like either if it's plagiarism or allegory from mm -hmm, mm -hmm. other stories, ancient cultures, or um, allegories of people's lives. You know, like this is a story that will happen to this man, and let's take right. this situation and give you an example of how to behave in this situation is right. like um, it all needs to be modernized yeah. because the, t the times are different. I do believe in preserving some of the ancient word 
Mm -hmm. I like the the old tongue of the word. Mm -hmm. So the thing with the New Testament is that you're supposed to meditate on the word and the word is supposed to reveal itself, like an epiphany type of thing. You're supposed to have this awakening. When I had the awakenings mm -hmm. from a lot of the texts in the Bible was when I study ancient cultures. And yeah. then it's a, the, the, the biblical text is explained more. Right. Like, and, like the creation story. Mm -hmm. And you read like um, the Enuma Elish, which is an ancient Sumerian story. Right. And then you like, oh, okay, this is a lot of, the sto uh, a lot, bit more of the pieces makes yes. more sense yeah. now. Yes coming from this ancient text. It's like as if Abraham came and crossed over to become a Hebrew from the paganism, believing in one God. Right. It's like he took stories from that culture and maybe he couldn't remember them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so he wrote down what he could remember and, right. and, and fixed it so that instead of many gods, there's just the one. Right. And, but, then you, but you can kind of see that when you study ancient cultures. I mean, you and can. a lot of them. You see Jesus. You can see Jesus in Hinduism. You can see him in ancient um, South American culture. You can see right. him in ancient Egyptian culture, Sumerian culture. You can see him everywhere. Well, I mean, I don't think he's like strictly to one group or one culture. I well, like, what I mean is, um, everyone has taken "Love Thy Neighbor." I mean, that spreads across into the Muslim. I mean, into everything. And that even goes outside of it that people that don't necessarily believe in him will still adhere to this thing that is this word that has been passed down. I get that because I'm not a religious person. If I read a Hindu text and I find jewels of wisdom in there, I'll apply it to right, my life. Right. I'll take it on. But a lot of cultural mixing happened in those ancient times. So maybe the biblical story is a mixture of different right. stories coming together. I think people have to be free to explore and come to this conclusion without being told what to believe and then judged if they don't believe it. So like my daughter is 10, she'll be 10, mm -hmm. and she can't understand how God created man and a woman and you don't explain about her favorite creatures in the world, which is dinosaurs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I do. how do you get from dinosaurs <laughs> to the first human beings? Right. But why doesn't God talk about the dinosaurs? No, well, why true. doesn't the Bible talk about right. the dinosaurs and, the, and, you know, how do yeah. you explain the cultures that predate certain things? People need these facts in well, order they do, to, to go in that. to these beliefs about our religion or something. And I, I think the problem is we've, especially in America, we've gotten to this place where religion is government. It's, supposed to be government. it's not God, it's government. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, here's my thing with religion. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, we would, you know, mm -hmm. go over the Bible and have Bible studies, like, yep. every week. Yep. We had tests on Sundays, you know. Right. And then we were, at, then I went, when I went to the Nation of Islam with my aunt, mm -hmm. and you had to wear the garb. Right. Mm -hmm. You couldn't eat certain things right. and stuff. Mm -hmm. I found the religions to be the same, except for that they don't view, I believe, Jesus as a... That's the, the difference. The they view him of, as a prophet, yeah. but not as the son of God. And then there's some that don't believe he's come yet. And then there's Christians. I mean, I do believe that he's come and he's ascended. Well, from, so okay. I have this issue and I get a lot of lashback when mm -hmm. I say that I will not accept the religion of the colonizers, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, Islam or Christianity. Right. And that's an interesting part. The Arab part of nation mm -hmm. colonized Africa as well. And they imposed Islam on their, the nations that they conquered. Right. So you have a lot of Islamic nations in Africa. Yeah. Then you have Christianity, yep. which was another coloni colonizer's religion. Religion is a source of control. It's how right. you, the government can use religion to control people. Yes. Keep them in the state of mind, passiveness, and, you know, follow. No, I agree with that. I do. Even uh, in the Bible, it teaches slavery was, you know, you're, you were... You were created or you were prophesied that you would be a slave. I don't buy none of that. Yeah. And so I figured that there was a culture, a way of living, a way of life that we had before the colonizers bought their religion and, and, and forced it upon us. Right. So those are the things that I want to well, study and, and what, get into. This is what destroys the concept of God, is man. Man mm -hmm. will take God and go to war and kill in the name of a God that may not even condone this war. It's either you take do, my do you know religion I mean? or you take death. 
Yeah, basically, that's it. And I mean, it's, it's been like that for mm -hmm. centuries. If, if I come to you and I, I say to you, take this religion or, like you said, death. Mm -hmm. To me, that's not God. That's man using God well, it, to impose a control. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's not... I didn't choose it on my own. No, I didn't come right. to it on my own. It's like um, you are what your parents are. Well, basically, yeah. So your parents chose to choose the religion and not death. Right. And now they're practicing a religion that they probably didn't want to at first, but after right. generations, who knows now if, you, if know. it's something that you wanted to do. Jesus himself was a Jew. Where do you get Christianity from? How is Christianity so different than the religion that, of the person you know that I do. Yes, you're following. I right. Mean, to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. Okay. So you create a whole religion off of Christ, and that wasn't his religion. No, I mean they've they've basically sold him. They can man can take Christ and and, and turn him into did anything. It. Constantine decided that it was it was, there was more Christians in the nation, so let's just convert everyone to Christianity. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I found out also just by watching like Netflix shows? Yeah. <laughs> they, they have some fiction in it. A lot of kings made their own in, um, interjections of their beliefs into the Catholic yes. Yes. religion, like the, the body of Christ. Well, that's the I'm thing not is sure which king did not, that. There's no purity to it. Religion is, it's basically, you have these Christians that basically practice paganism. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's wrong. But I have talked to several, and they'll excuse it and justify it because, well, we need to bring people in. But it's wrong. They make paganism seem like it's this really bad word, and it really just means non-Christian. That's it. If you're if you're going to start getting on this where you're judging someone because they're not a Christian or they're not practicing, don't you have to at least purify yourself a little bit more and stop bringing paganism into it? With Christmas, Easter. Christmas, you have Easter, you have... And these are basically pagan holidays. And they're spoken against, but yet the Christian community embrace... Most of them, not all of them, but they embrace them. As mm -hmm. if they're a part of it when it clearly states that God himself wants nothing to do with it. So if you're truly practicing and you're going out and you're preaching, this, this is why I don't like religion. How do you get your child to, um, to really respect Passover, right, mm -hmm. with an Easter bunny and Easter eggs. <laughs> How do you get your child to respect the life and trials of Jesus Christ with Christmas gifts? Or eggs. You, you can't. Christmas They're so contrary one to the other. To do, you know, and you try not to teach, you know, what Santa Claus has to do with Jesus Christ. Nothing. But that's a tradition, I guess. It's associated it's a, it's a with person-made tradition. It is. It has nothing to do with. And then it's like with. you're a bad parent if you decide not to to practice to to participate or in these traditions. And there's something wrong with if you, you if you don't do it. If you try to create new traditions with your right. children, then it's like, oh well, I didn't get anything for for Christmas, and everybody else did. You see, that's what it is. So it's, then it's you feed just, into it. It's toys. Toys. It's a way. Toys that's going to get thrown away. <coughs> right. And, do, you know, end up in some waste that's going to. It's gonna just more consumerism. It's to go out and you buy oh and you gosh, shop, max out your credit cards, max out your credit cards. I mean, religion and consumerism, it, it all ties in. No real benefit to the community of having these churches. No. There's no, and that's there's not the even thing. a sense of community anymore. I remember no, when my not. mother was growing up and she would say that. She would get in trouble by the neighbor and come home and get in trouble. <laughs> and nowadays it's like, don't to touch my own. kid, don't yell at my kid, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah. if I'm like, if you see my kid doing something they don't not supposed to, by all means, right? The church is supposed to be the the glue that brings the community together. They're supposed to. I see them as separating from the community. I know at one point they were actually, if you didn't pay tithe, they weren't letting people in. Now some people can't afford to pay tithe. You know how many times I went to church you with know? my grandmother and I knew I was hungry <laughs> and I wanted to take out that tithes basket and yeah. I'm like, well, you know, God is not going to be mad if I take it. If I home if I get it, to <laughs> if get you're something hungry. to eat. You have the food pantries in Wallingford that are running low. 
because you have people that are hungry. You have kids that are hungry. Where's the church? Mm -hmm. where, where are they? So people are so turned off to the church. These four walls, you go in, you sit there, you give money, and they're so separate from the poor. They're so separate from the community itself that they almost exist for themselves, just for them. When you have preachers who, who are making millions of dollars like on the Like your Osteens and them, yes. Then that's really a disconnect. I'm, I'm not saying preachers shouldn't be wealthy. How There's do you a have a million dollar facility do you need? in a neighborhood that a lot of people probably can't even afford to go to your church? Exactly. Because they probably can't even afford to pay the tithes <laughs> that you require. When do the Christians themselves stop because I've been criticized for not going to church because I don't believe in them. I don't believe in what they've become. Mm -hmm. I don't like American cultural Christianity. I just think it's nothing but just for profit. It's, you know, oh, positive right. vibes only, you know, and it's like, no, you can be depressed. You can be miserable. You can be sad. You can be these things. You're supposed to be these things. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you're not blessed. Right. If you feel those emotions, they're there for a reason. And, you know, to the Christians, sometimes they're there to bring you to your knees for a certain reason. You know, and, and the Christians, like, when you say things like that, you get criticized. Yeah, you can't say anything against the church. Well, no, but the I church is like... I mean, I've had a, like plenty of <laughs> arguments with Christians about Christianity, <clears throat> and I just stick to my guns when I say I will not accept the religion of the colonizers. I go by what was here first. Right. And the pagans were here first. Yeah. And I'm, you know, in research, the pagans had an issue with the Christians being lazy yes. and non-strict about their, or non-disciplined about their religious practices. Right. The pagans were more structured and they had more discipline when it came to the their beliefs, beliefs and, and their, stuff, right. their practices. <coughs> so it's like you were, you know, going to have a, a ceremony for the goddess, but you really put the time and the effort and you really, you know, made sure that you were focused about praising that goddess. So when Christians get criticized, they think it's a persecution and it's not a persecution. They'll probably love it because for them it's like they're being like Christ because he was In persecuted. The New Testament clearly says there is persecution that is brought on by self and there's a genuine persecution. I see a lot of the church going through a persecution and it's their own fault because of how they portray him in the church. Do you know what I'm saying? No. Like <laughs> I don't go to church and I'm not religious and I if you go to church in it in over 20 years so and I you don't, don't partake in the festivals like Christmas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If someone chooses not to, you get criticized for that. Right. Which is more <clears throat> let me say a, a genuine form of a type of persecution than someone who, you know, Kiki, look, you shouldn't be practicing this, like, these gifts and the Santa Claus. This has nothing to do with Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm not persecuting you. Right. I'm telling you the truth. According to what you and your Bible says in your church, you're wrong. The church is wrong. The church has got it wrong. That's not a persecution. You've done it to yourself. If I step out of the church because I don't want to practice these things, and you come at me and say, there's something wrong with you. You stop following God. You can't be a true Christian if you don't do this. But then that Christian is judging you. Exactly. And then the rule is judge not. Exactly. But here's the thing in that. We all make judgments. We do. And we're not Every free day. from it. <laughs> it's like, how do you say judge not? You judge everything. Like, if I just meet you yeah. and I think, you know, she's kind of sketchy. Yeah. I'm making a judgment. We do that all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do that. And I, and I, I make the judgment call, look it. I'm not going to hang around her. Right. Because she's trouble. You know, that's a judgment. But it's a judgment call. Right. So the, how the do you Bible, say not to judge? And when you tell Christians, like the Bible says, examine your own heart. I'm not to examine mm -hmm. your heart. I'm to lay on my bed and examine my own heart, mm -hmm. my own issues, my own prides. And that's come the to, journey within. I agree with that. I do. They're scared to take. If you're supposed right. to be one with your creator, the only way to be one with it's your to creator be naked. Well, <laughs> is to be naked, but you need to go within yourself. Yeah, now I can't go I can't in go you. outside and be like, preacher, 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 yeah. help me. Because there's a lot of questions that you need to answer right. for yourself. It's right. like 
when you stop lying to yourself, you can be honest with everyone else. And once you find the truth about yourself, you demand it from everything around you. But then once you find the truth about yourself, aren't you in connection with your creator? Well, you would think so because then you understand. That's when you start sounding crazy. It is. And people say, like, <laughs> oh, she's psycho. Yeah. I'm not there yet, though. I mean, I have been called selfish because I mm -hmm. don't want to partake in Christmas. I have been called, and even this will probably bring criticism because I don't agree with what Christianity has turned into. The church today is given more of a false hope than a genuine hope. I get a lot of lashback when mm -hmm. I say that I will not accept the religion of the colonizers. You know, I think maybe, maybe I'm suffering from post-traumatic stress <laughs> from well, what I've learned about certain things about history. Maybe it affected me a certain way, so it, yeah, it, it, it makes me think a certain way that I hold on to certain things that may be outdated. You have to come to that place on your own. I can't bring you there, and I can't throw you in a, a church with four walls. No, you're never going to get me in a church. Exactly. <laughs> you're never going to get me to accept the religion. Right. But if you threw an ancient pagan uh, way of culture and I agreed with it, I'd accept that over right. your religion because it was the foundations of civilization. I'd like to see the church, this American culture of Christianity, really take a look at itself, not at me, not at you, but at itself, the mm -hmm. parishioners, all of them, and kind of understand that it's not right. God, that it's them that kind of need to examine their own hearts because they're turning people away. They're right. not bringing people in, they're turning them away. And there's a reason why that's happening, but they're not listening. I'd like to see them come back to a sense of community. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see them give a crap about the poor. People need to start looking at and focusing on the, how the changes and not the issues. Yeah, exactly, yes. Because then we all could focus on, you know, right. what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong, and then nobody has a solution to fix it, but then people are afraid of change. And they the only are, thing yeah, that's consistent in life is change. Mm -hmm. And so change has to be prevalent in modernizing yeah. our way of life into the right. future. So not only talk about issues, but talk about the changes that need to take place. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's best if everybody had their own just personal relationship with the creator mm -hmm. or whatever the cre creative source is. Right. For me, it's the universe. Everybody should be free to do just I that. I think people who are non-religious and <coughs> call themselves um, spiritual are more spiritual than mm -hmm. religious people. I think you're right. They, they judge, they don't judge people right. as much as religious people do. And you, especially when you said the religion of the colonizers, I don't think people get that part of it. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in, for listening. I know the conversation was a little, it was kind of all over the place, but these are unscripted, they're raw, they're just real conversations, and I, want, I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Thank you, Kiki. You're welcome. Thank you, too. You're welcome.